All right, all right. Welcome back to another edition of Dirty Talk. I am your host, Dirty Cuts. And today, I definitely have a special guest. This guy has been a, a, a motivation to me since I was uh, a young guy coming out of high school. Um, I've been knowing this guy over 10 plus years. He is the Winston-Salem uh, student representative. I mean, student minister. minister representative for the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, brother Evan Guan Muhammad. Welcome to the show. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Ricardo. It's good to be here, man. Okay, good okay, okay. Sorry about that, brother. Oh, no, I got no, a little tongue tied. No, brother, it's, it's no. I'm a little nervous. No I'm a little nervous. I'm just but your brother. I know yes, that. I know that's yes, right. Sir. I know that's right. And I've been knowing you long. I should. Yes, be. longer than that, man. It's been over twenty years, actually. It's over twenty. Yes, sir. Years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so my age. Telling I. <laughs> but we're but honest to be here. That's what's up, yes, man. Sir. And um, uh, I'm gonna say this, man. Ever since I heard you speak brother i was like glued to you man you know Thanks what i'm saying um because i never heard uh black men speak that way and yes, carry themselves in a demeanor that the nation of islam brothers yes sir carry themselves yes sir um and i definitely want to commend you and thank you for being a representative like that all praises due to allah all praises do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, now let's get on into the meat of the thing today. Um, I had uh, it came to me, and I was like, "Um, uh, we need a wake up call out here." Yes, sir. Um, and everybody is is on this wave. They saying they woke, mm -hmm. but I think everybody's still groggy, right? And they down, they laid back down a little bit, rolled over, and they just looking up at the ceiling. There. They they sleepwalking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's sleepwalking. <laughs> right. and bumping they bumping they big toe yes, sir. on the corner, you know what I'm saying? Not really actually waking up just yet. Yes, sir. So um I wanted to reiterate what Minister the Honorable um Elijah Muhammad mm -hmm. wrote mm -hmm. when brought to us yes, sir. um the message to the black man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um I thought it was a very powerful book. Yes, sir. Um, I grew up in the church. Yes, sir. And uh, my uncle was a minister uh, and a bishop. And I can say I never picked up the book like I picked up the book when I was studying with FOI yes, sir. and reading this book right yes, here. Sir. Yes, sir. It actually broke the Bible down where I can really understand it. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And I think that whether what 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 uh religion you are in America as a black male, you need to read this book. Yes, sir. Most definitely. <laughs> you know, I don't care if you're a Buddha, or atheist, whatever, you need to read this book. Because it's geared towards us and and and, and uh a way we can get out. Yes, sir. So therefore I, w I just want you to take the floor, brother, and explain to us about the message to the black man. <laughs> well, that's a big task. I mean, you know, if um, you could break it down to yes, us sir. In, in a 30 minute frame, you know what I'm saying? Well, essentially, the message to the black man mm -hmm. from the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a divine message, it is a message from God Himself to us. And so when you read this monumental book, uh, let me go back. Um, one of the things that the hip hop artist T.I. Tip, we're all familiar with, he said that when he was in conversation with our brother, may God be pleased with him, Nipsey Hussle, he said Nipsey gave him several books to read. And one book he gave him was this book, Message to the Black Man. Mm. And so this message is not just an ordinary message. What you find in message to the black man from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is divine revelation and divine revelation is knowledge that has not been known to the world. And so the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in this message to the black man, he comes to give us the prerequisite knowledge that we must have as a people here in North America, which is a knowledge of self, a knowledge of God, which is relevant to self 
and a knowledge of other than God and the enemy of God or the devil. So uh, the book is very profound because the information that is contained in the book is not just information in terms of facts. The information, because it is divine revelation, it is information that's meant to transform human life. So there have been individuals who've lived a lifestyle of ill repute, but after reading the divine message that's in this book have transformed their life. People who were struggling with addiction after reading the divine words in this book have uh, got off of their addictions. Men who were mistreaters of their women have become respecters of the black woman because in this message, there's a chapter talked about the respect and the elevation of the black woman. In this book, we are taught who we are and our relationship to God. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that every time you look at a black man and woman, you're looking at God. Because if we are made in the image and the likeness of God, and he's our father, when you look in the mirror, you see your own image, you see yourself. You were robbed of our minds. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad comes and gives us an understanding of scripture, both Bible and Quran, uh, and teaches us that we are the people of the fulfillment of the scriptures that you read about. We didn't know that. And we didn't know uh, that uh, we had this divine connection to God. But message to the black man, it gives us so much that it lifts us. It teaches us who we are, whose we are. It teaches us how to respect one another. It teaches us how to pull our resources together to do something for ourselves. So there's so much in the message to the black man. In this okay. short time, I can't do justice. Okay, okay. But the Let's... short of it is that it is the divine message from God Himself. Okay. Well, how can we? Uh, how can a young brother find this book or get a hold of this book? So well, you, you can easily. Um, and, and let me go back. Actually, we have been on a campaign. When I say we. Uh, the local uh, Nation of Islam Mosque in Winston-Salem. Over the last few months, the FOI have actually been going out into the community, giving this book out to our people, especially our young people. You know, the Bible in the book of Hosea says, my people are destroyed for what? A lack of knowledge. It didn't say that they were destroyed for a lack of Gucci, or a lack of Chanel, or a lack of... Uh, you know, diamonds or a lack of the new J's, but a lack of knowledge. And so we thought, what better gift could we give to our people from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a free gift of knowledge to our people? Because that is what our community needs here in Winston-Salem, especially our young people. Mm -hmm. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that our young people are the fearless, the most fearless generation that we have produced. Uh, but we have to marry the wisdom onto the fearlessness because he teaches us now that our youth, which we see here in the city of Winston-Salem, we see it going on in Durham and Charlotte and Greensboro, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that our youth have been programmed for self-destruction. <clears throat> programmed. When you look at a computer, the, pu the computer is programmed by a program. That's someone who puts data and information into the computer to make the computer do what it's supposed to do. Well, if our youth have been programmed, we have to ask ourselves, who's programmed them? So if you listen to the language of our young people, whether they be on 21st Street, 23rd Street, Jackson Street, Cleveland, they use such language as, I'm on demon time. Well, what is a demon? See, a demon is a creature that's possessed by a devil. When you get to message to the black man, you'll see who the devil is. He's not a spook. He's not a spirit. He's a real live person. But there are those who have taken control of our young people's mind and have them in a deaf lifestyle. So we want to offer our young people a knowledge of self that puts them on God's time. You understand what I'm saying? And so we thought, what better way than we can transform the minds of our young people than to give them a knowledge of self? So we have been going throughout the community giving out copies freely from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan of Message to the Black Man. So anyone who wants to get a copy of the book, they can go to NOI.org, which is our website, and we have finalcall.store.com. 
and they can purchase not only Final Call, but all of the books. But we're on a campaign because we know the value of the book. We want to give this book from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan free to our community, especially our youth. Right. I know that's right. But if there's, there's any way I can get a some books here. Yes, sir. Because I come across a lot of young men that come into the barbershop. Yes, sir. Um, I love to minister, uh, you know, some of the books out to some, Oh, yes, sir. To some young because men the barbershop, they, Brother Ricardo, is where the conversations happen. Exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> the barbershop is the black man's uh, country club. Yeah, it's like country club. <laughs> it's the place where we come to relax and release. Right. And so we have to use the barbershop and the beauty salon mm -hmm. as like uh, our ancestors in, in, in Africa. Uh, you know, they use the center of the village to be able to communicate the problems and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you, being a barber, are in a position because you deal with all of our people. I do, on right? a daily basis. On a daily basis. And so it presents an opportunity for us to have real frank conversation with our brothers who are coming in and likewise with our sisters who come into the beauty shop. And I think we have to be creative because we can't depend on the public uh, food system, I mean the public school system, <laughs> to educate our people. <laughs> so the barber shop, the beauty salon, uh, the church, the mosque, the community center, all have to be new educational systems. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that we have to have a new uh, educational paradigm. But that educational paradigm begins with a knowledge of self, knowing who we are and whose we are. A power knowledge. A power knowledge. I got that from my Yes, sir. Claude Anderson. Mm -hmm. Dr. Claude Anderson. Mm -hmm. right. Shout out to Dr. Claude yes, Anderson sir. for uh, writing that book, Power right. Knowledge. And he's one of us. And so, and, and that's one of the things that we can do to help our people and our youth is to create uh, economic program. Right. And so in the message to the black man, there is an economic program. Right. And it's the economic program that inspired our brother, who I mentioned just it's, earlier. It's, 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 it's the same. With the marathon. It's, because in there, he talks about how if we are like-minded, four or five of us who are like-minded come together, pool our mental resources, and pool our financial resources, and go into business. And then he lists steps, right, that we should do. Uh, I'm paraphrasing now, but in the book, I think it's page uh, 74, uh, or 174. And can I read oh, it for a second? Because I, I want to make sure we get into it. It's on page 174, so I went off. Okay. He says, this is a blueprint. Recognize the necessity for unity and group operation activities. This is why unity is so important. Unity is the key for economic development. I might not be able to do it by myself. You may not be able to do it by yourself. But if we pull our nickels and dimes together, then we can do something for ourselves. Then he says, pull your resources physically as well as financially. Stop warning criticism of everything that's black owned and black operate. You know, we will go to uh, Macbeth and uh, Murder King and Taco Hill and White Man's Castle, and they will give us bad service, and we'll continue to go back. But if we go to our brother or our sister's restaurant for a fish dinner, and they short us one hush puppy, I ain't going back to them niggas' place not no more. That's why I don't support black business, right? No, we cannot be criticizing and uh, uh, constantly criticizing black businesses. We have to support our black businesses. And then he says, lastly, point five, observe the operations of the white man. He's successful. He makes no excuses for his failures. He works hard in a collective manner. So we have to study those who are successful, even uh, among our enemies, because right. there is something to learn. Right. And, and in here, he says, Brother Ricardo, work hard in a collective manner. So even when we get together, in order for us to be successful in black economics, the, the cameraman has to work hard being a cameraman. The person responsible for lighting has to work hard uh, being responsible for the lighting. The person who's uh, editing has to do a hard job in terms of editing uh, so that, 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 that we are successful. We are biology, and so the foods that we take in, it affects our chemistry, it affects our mood. And so the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us the importance of what foods to eat, not only what foods to eat, when to eat, and how often to eat. We strive to eat 
one meal a day, right? And now the scientists are bearing witness to that. They call it what? Intimate fasting. But we've been doing this for 90 years, and it's the key to uh, 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 slowing the aging process, because the more you eat, the more digestion happens. And in the digestive process, there is what's called the release of free radicals, right? And the free radicals, once they are released, they break down the cells. So they break down the cells in the teeth, the cells in the skin. But when we eat less, and when we eat less often, then the body has a chance to regenerate itself. And also in how to eat to live, one meal a day is very important with the time that we're now in. Because we have another book called The Fall of America. Right? <laughs> and in The Fall of America. Hold on. Yes, sir. The Fall of America. If you want to know the headlines before they come out, just read this book. It teaches us what is happening in America now. As the minister of Farrakhan has been telling the people for years, watch the weather. Why is he saying watch the weather? Because the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that there are four judgments that God would use against this modern Babylon. See, see, That's called America. Flooded. Yes. See? You see, you see, uh, uh, of flooded. Yes, sir. And in, in Fall of America, he down. talks about the drought that we're seeing now. Yeah. He talks about great snowstorms that will be coming, that will be burying people in their homes. He talks about hailstones that will be the size of ice that will fall out of the sky, right? But he also tells us how we can navigate through this very dark hour. You mentioned the drought. When there's no water, what happens to the food? So in Message to the Black Man, he says one of the greatest famines that the world has ever known is coming to America. The president just stated that there's a food shortage coming. But if you got how to eat to live, you can you can you can stretch the food that you have. Because the average American eats about three meals a day, seven times a, 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 a day, a seven times a day, right? Seven uh, three times a day, seven days a week, right? So that's 21 meals. But if I'm eating one meal a day, that same amount of food that the average person in America eats. One who's following how to eat to live can stretch that food to a whole month. Mm. See? And so during the time of that famine that's food. coming, during that time of famine that's coming, you want to have the discipline of how not to eat so much food and to stress the food that you have. So he teaches us in how to eat to live, what foods to store up in our homes. Because we are taught to store up food from three to four months. Right? And so we have a class uh, for the sisters called MGT. Okay. Where the sisters are learning. Who, what, what does, I'm sorry, what does the MGT stand for? MGT stands for Muslim Girls Training. Okay. And GCC, General Civilization Class. And it's a class where our sisters are learning what are called seven units. And on the brother side, we have a class called the FOI, Fruit of Islam. It is a military training of the men that belong to Islam in North America. See, the black man the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we're not fit the way we are currently are. We're not fit for self or kind, so we must be completely remade. Because in the beginning, God said, let us make man. He didn't say, let us make nigga. Let us make thug. Let us make gangster. So if the black man is now a thug, if he's a gangster, if he's a nigga, if he's a slider, a stepper, a shooter, that's not him. Who are you? Psalms chapter 82, verse 6, he all God. So the black man has to be retrained into who he is, which is a god, and the black woman is a god as well. All right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Did y'all hear that? Yes, sir. Okay, now. I see you got this book right here. And a lot of people would have been, you know, wanting to, you know, like, we ain't messing with fair kind of boys killed my face. You got this book right here. But didn't you kill Malcolm? Mm -hmm. Explain explain this book. Why you got this in this connection? Well, that is a part of the false propaganda that didn't start with black people. Mm. It started with our open enemies. Minister Farrakhan had nothing whatsoever to do with the death of our brother, Malcolm X. And if you know what's going on recently, two brothers 
spent decades of their life for a crime that they did not commit. Mm. Right? Mm. So now the community should be asking what we've asked because we have nothing to hide. Minister Farrakhan said to the government, open up all of your files and don't leave one damn thing redacted and let the truth fall where it may. Well, if the government was honest, they would open up the files. But why hasn't the government opened up the FBI files on Malcolm X? See, it's a lot of talk about the FBI in the news, right? Right. But if the FBI... You see it on YouTube. Right, right. But why don't we call for them to open up the, all of the files on Malcolm X, all of the files on Martin Luther King, all of the files on uh, JFK? So if the government is honest, why do you keep the files closed? You said that trio on the road like they are connected or something. Well, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. But that book is about one of our brothers, Brother Demetri Muhammad, who's a part of our research team. Okay. But if you yeah, read that the book... Problem. He, it, was he the author of this book? Yes, sir. Okay. But the information is cited, uh, it's well documented, and it answers a lot of the questions concerning the lies that have been put out. You have to understand, Brother Ricardo, that COINTELPRO, uh, which came from the FBI once again, was instrumental in destroying black organizations. And they acknowledged that they engineered the split between the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X. It came out from J. 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 Hoover. But in the COINTELPRO, it talks about their goal to discredit black organizations. So this false propaganda has been an attempt to try to discredit uh, the Nation of Islam and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because they are afraid of the truth that we have that we believe that will free our people from the open enemy. And in uh, COINTELPRO, one of the stated targets was to prevent black nationalist type groups from recruitment among the youth, mm. right? So every so often, as Minister Farrakhan becomes popular among our young people, then the enemy brings up this propaganda because that's been a tactic of the government. But by the grace of Allah, we, as the Quran says, are casting truth and falsehood and knocking out its brains. So the people are beginning to see through the lies and they're coming to the truth. So let me ask you something. I'm just going to throw this wild card on you now. Yes, sir. You think um, Tupac. Do you think he has something to do with this agenda while, um, I mean, as far as being assassinated? I think he was assassinated. More so as being murdered. Well, let me say this from the Honorable Minister Lewis Park. Because this, well, I mean, before you go, because they say that a brother from the nation was involved with that too. With well, the security the guard. The, was the security guard? I haven't heard the security that. guard guy. I haven't heard that. Oh, okay. Well, I've heard it. Okay. So, but anyway, that's the reason I wanted to ask about it and its affiliation with the Black Panther uh, movement. Yes, sir. I, I haven't heard any, any anything about uh, any person affiliated, but I don't. I don't doubt the enemy because when our brother Biggie was killed. Mm -hmm. The picture that they put up there was a brother that they say it had a suit and bow tie and was clean shaven. Oh, that, that, that's probably what I meant. You were referring to the Y'all referred to Big. I'm sorry. I, I mean, and, that, and, and that's been uh, dis, uh, dismissed. Um, yeah, that's what it was. It was but see, once again, see, these are propaganda by the enemy. So, uh, in these cases, if you go back to that time, the Nation of Islam were the peacemakers between East and West. It was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan who, when right. the East and West were beefing that led, in that climate that led to the deaths of our brothers Biggie and Tupac, it was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan that the rappers reached out to and he squashed the beef and told them how to pool their resources together. And so after that, you saw hip-hop doing... Uh, what you call compilation records and, and, and whatnot, but that was inspired by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And in fact, Ice Cube talks about. He spoke, he spoke life into the whole. Yes, world. sir. Yes, sir. At that time. Yes, sir. Because and that was around the time too. The Million Man March, right? Yes, sir. The Million Man March was in 1995. 
that was a 95. Yes, sir, 95. Yes, sir. Oh, the wild I'm thinking it was a little later. I'm so old, you know. And so you mentioned that hip hop. See, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has taught us that one rap is more powerful than a thousand sermons. Because our youth, Brother Ricardo, they're not listening to the teachers. They're not listening to the preachers. They're not listening to uh, the politicians. They're not listening to their parents. But they are listening to Little Dirt. They are listening to Young Boy NBA. And so they are the new leaders. And they don't realize how powerful that they are. But as I stated, our young people are on demon time because there is someone that is putting devilish thoughts in their head. But imagine if we put the wisdom in their head and the wisdom in their heads translate into wisdom that comes through lyrics and a nice beat. See, it was that marriage between wisdom and hip hop that uh, made our generation conscious because we could hear a public enemy. Farrakhan, don't, say, yes, don't tell me you know the man until you understand. It was KRS One telling us no beef or uh, uh, no pork or beef or hamburger because that's suicide, self murder, right? It was it was X Clan telling us this is protected by the red, the, the black, black, and the, the green, green with the key. There's a crossroads. <laughs> See? So it was hip hop that when we would go into the mosque. We were hearing the message, and if we were five percenters or members of the nation of gods and earth, when we were in the cipher, we were learning the lessons. Right. But So what we were hearing in the mosque and That's in the cipher, we were here on the radio. So we just have to get back to that original message in hip-hop, which was consciousness to lift our people and guide our uh, young people away from demon time to God time. Because that's how I started. I know that's right. Okay. That was powerful right there. God time. God time. Okay, now we got our Savior has arrived. Yes, sir. By last month. Yes, sir. Now this got powerful right here because uh, as we growing up in the church, it was this stigma that Jesus was coming back. Yes, sir. Save us. Yes, sir. And by this man saying our Savior has arrived, it kind of makes me related to that. Yes, sir. You know. So, could you tell me a little bit about this book? Well, because we didn't have a knowledge of self, we didn't know who we were. We didn't know that we were God's people. And see, once you learn that you're God's people, there's a promise that God makes to his people. Genesis 15, 13, Abraham no assured thee that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve that nation for 400 years. But after that, I, God, will come. I will judge that nation, and they will return to their fathers in peace. So who is that people? There were never any white Jews in Egypt building pyramids for 400 years. No. We are taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan that what you read of in scripture, Brother Ricardo, 75% of the scripture is prophetic. 25% is historical. The trick of the enemy is, is he's been having us read everything prophetical as though it was historical. And everything historical as though it was prophetical. So when you read the book from Revelations to Genesis, you're talking about God intervening in the affairs of a people who have been oppressed by a tyrannical government. That's in the beginning of the book and that's in the end of the book. But who is that people? Who are the only people that have spent 400 years in a strange land? Huh? Robbed of their language, robbed of their names. They used to have the names of their fathers. Now their names were changed to what? Meshach, Shazrach, and a bad Negro, right? <laughs> Made to eat the king's meat. Right. Swine. Everything on the pig from the rooter to the tutor. But the promise of God is that he would come. And we believe that he did intervene in our affairs. July 4th, 1930, in the coming of Master Fahd Muhammad, who came and taught the most unreliable Muhammad face to face. As the scripture says in the book of Exodus that Moses would talk and be taught by God face to face as though a man talks to his friends. So we believe that God did come. He came in person. 
and he raised the most honorable Elijah Muhammad up to deliver a message of salvation. And now we are charged because the book says, I will send saviors. So after he sends one savior, he doesn't stop there. He deposits his spirit in us so that we all become saviors of our people. So we have a job to save ourselves today. That's big facts. That's big facts. I didn't know you were going to go through all of them. Yeah, we're going to go through all of them. We're going to go through all of them. That's great. Okay. Understanding the assault on the black man, black manhood, and black masculinity. This is a wonderful book that's written by a brother. You all might be familiar with him. He's Dr. Wesley Muhammad, student minister Wesley Muhammad. He's been on the Breakfast Club, and he's a dynamic scholar. He's a member of our National Executive Council and part of the research team. But this is a book inspired by what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan taught us, that there was a conspiracy to destroy the black male. Once again, going to the scripture, Pharaoh saw the children of Israel multiply. And he said, what? Come, let us deal wisely. Unless they multiply, become more numerous than us, and perchance a war break out, join on to our enemy. So what was the conspiracy? Destroy what? All of the male babies. So that is not historical. That is prophetical. And so who do we see dying in the streets of Winston-Salem today? Who do we see dying in the streets of Durham, Charlotte, Atlanta, L.A., Compton? It's the black male. Because there's an absolute conspiracy. But this conspiracy is now more scientific. Right? So our brother demonstrates how they are impacting us. And one of the things he said was very controversial at the time. He wrote about the pot plot. Mm. About marijuana. Mm. Now, the marijuana, let's get on that. you know, that's like a religion to some of our people. The Holy Herb. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. But what Dr. Wesley has documented was that there are medicinal purposes to marijuana in its natural state. But the marijuana that's on the streets of Winston Salem today, the THC, has been raised from its natural level. See, natural cannabis, the THC is only 1% to 2%. That's the weed from back in the day that we just used to get a little buzz and get our munchies on. But when you raise the THC that high, our brother documents, especially in the developing brain of young people, it retorts and impacts the frontal lobe that's responsible for emotion and self-control, right? Mm -hmm. And so the THC that's in the city is sometimes 40%, 50%, moon rock, loud. This is, in fact, impacting the brains of our young people, and it's impacting their ability to maintain their self-control and their impulsive. So when you look throughout Winston, you see shooting for what reason? It's very impulsive. No self-control. So this is a toxic mix that the enemy has brought in because they, Brother Ricardo, they are using chemical warfare. Chemical warfare through what we smoke. Chemical warfare through what we drink. Chemical warfare through what we eat. So we have to be aware of the enemy uh, and his machinations so we can avoid all of the plots. He talks about the attack on black masculinity. We've seen it. We've seen it recently where some of our biggest hip-hop artists, we've seen where people like Young Thug, our brother, who's now incarcerated, they put, they, he put on a dress. So now we have our biggest black artists and entertainers and athletes who are supposed to represent the alpha male and masculinity putting on dresses. Now they have our young people painting their fingernails. Now some of our young artists are putting on makeup and lipstick. Look at what's going on to us. They got us wearing dresses, painting our nails, putting on makeup and lipstick. One of the things that the ancient Greeks and Romans used to do is that when they conquered a nation, they would dress up the men as women to parade them around as an insult and sodomize them because it was a sign that they had conquered that that, that man, 
uh, and the men of that nation that they went to war with. So we have to be, we have to understand that there's absolutely uh, a conspiracy to emasculate the black man because the enemy knows and he fears uh, that, uh, that, that it is the man, when we come back to our rightful self, it's over for them. That's powerful. I believe that right now. Yes, That's sir. Uh, Brother Wesley behind me. Yes, sir. That wrote that book. Okay. The UFOs <laughs> and the Nation of Islam <laughs> was source, proof, and reality of the wills. Yes, sir. And this is written by uh, Brother Iliad. Iliad. He's also a member of our research team. Okay, okay, okay. And I also know that he spoke a little bit about that in the, in the message of the black man. Too. Message to the black man and the fall of America. Okay, let's get let's dig on into this because I, I love stuff like this. Talking to Mike. Okay, let's what did you I'm talking to Mike. Alright. Here's the book. So this so what's the purpose of this book right here? Why did why did this brother brother Ilya Well one bring this out? is to vindicate the truth that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan have been teaching us about this reality. For years, the Nation of Islam was mocked. When they would ask, what's the talk about these wheels or this mothership? Mm. Well, you can't mock us today because now the U.S. government has come out and acknowledged that there's a technology called, not they don't call them UFOs anymore, they call them what? Uh, unknown aerial phenomena. And their pilots, pilots who have been trained, who fly multi-billion dollar weapon systems, trained to identify and to spot enemy aircraft, have saw these vehicles, saw them doing things that they can't even explain, uh, going against the laws of physics that they know. But the most harm Elijah Muhammad taught us that these crafts, he teaches us from God himself about the mother plane. You have it in your Bible in the book of Revelation where it talks about the new Jerusalem, right? Yeah. It's a half a mile by half a mile. 1,500 smaller planes. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, these crafts are not from someplace out of space. He teaches us where they were made, who made them, who palaced them. They're no little green men or no gray men. They're the people that you call angels human beings of high intelligence and high wisdom. See, we are the people who build the pyramids. They don't know how we build the pyramids. So there's a technology and a science that we have that's been hidden back from this world. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teach us, Brother Ricardo, there are 60,000 books of higher mathematics. We only gave this world one book. So there are 59,999 uh, 59, books of higher mathematics and aerodynamics. And it's with our people. And that wheel uh, that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about is mentioned in the, in the Bible called the Book of Ezekiel, where Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Well, Ezekiel's vision of a wheel is a reality. It's there. And it has a specific job to do. And it's tied to black people in America. That's why it was called Above Top Secret. Above Top Secret. Yeah. So the government has acknowledged that they exist. So you can't call us liars, but what's above top secret is who's on those wheels. Like I said, they're no little green men. They're the angels. They're the original people. And they have um, they, they, they are waiting on orders from God for a specific I, I, saw, I saw this, I saw this uh, YouTube uh, uh, this YouTube uh, film where they found uh, a lady. Um, well, they found an aircraft on the moon that was crashed. And when they looked into the, well, they took a picture of the, uh, of the, of the, the so-called alien. And it, it, looked, it looked like a black woman with braids. 
I, I've seen that, but I'll say this. The Honorable Minister Lewis Farrakhan kind of say I crapped on crash. Mm. Mm. And he teaches us that soon you will see these wheels all over your major cities. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad was asked by the enemy, well, when will these wheels that you talk about, Mr. Muhammad, go into effect? He said, simple, when you attack us. So we don't carry any weapons in the nation of Islam because we don't need no weapons. The greatest weapon we need is the truth. But um, we have uh, a higher power watching over us as well. That's why we. That's why Minister Farrakhan is bold as he is. See, see, there have been people, and I want to end on this note. There are people that say Minister Farrakhan must be a part of the Illuminati, or he must be working with the government because he's still around. Because to Negroes, the greatest thing that you can do if you teach the truth is to die. See, our people who think like that, they believe that the white man is God. But there's a power bigger than the enemy, and that power is the power that backs the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and it's the power that backs us, and it's the power, God, who wants to back all of our people, including our suffering people here in Winston-Salem. But it comes based upon us receiving a knowledge of self and submitting and changing our life. Because that's the most important thing about message to the black man is that the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad are transformational, right? So we cannot talk about, Brother Ricardo, economic development until we are first transformed. Because you and I can go into business, but if I'm a liar, is our business going to last that long? If I'm a thief, huh, is our business going to last that long? So we have to rid ourselves of these impediments. And a knowledge of self produces love of self. And once we love self, then we love everything that comes from self. So, And we want for our brother and sister what we want for ourselves. And so once we have that type of knowledge, it produces that type of love. Then all of the other problems that we can think of, it will go away. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that 95% of our problems could be solved by our units. Because our unity is more powerful than an hydro, uh, a hydrogen on atomic bomb. We fall a victim to the environment because of our ignorance. Remember I said, our people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. See, as this world falls, this is why God came to give us divine revelation and it's that divine revelation, if we would listen to it, if we would follow it, that would get us through. See, but there's a consequence to not following divine revelation. Because the longer we resist in uh, abiding by the truth and changing our life, then the more harder the consequences will become. But once we accept the truth, we submit to that truth, then that truth changes our life, and that truth will produce a lifestyle, and that lifestyle that we live will be the protection that we need. We don't need guns. Huh? We don't need carnal weapons. We just need the truth and to change the lifestyle that we're living because that is the protection. And so the psalmist says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Huh? And you know the rest. Right? And that's that's all we need. We don't have to worry about all of that. Yeah, America's going to fall. Yeah, there's going to be drought and famine. But we got guidance from God to how to get through it. Now the question is, are we willing to submit to it? That's right. You heard that, fellas. You heard that. So, How we doing on time? We're going to set the block. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. We got class to get to. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Is there any, any, any shout outs you want to give? I, the, the, the major shout out that I want to give, I want to give to you. Okay. <laughs> Brother Ricardo <laughs> and your wonderful staff here. Okay, thank you, man. Of talking dirty. Right. We've been talking clean. <laughs> right. Right? Right. So, I, you know, it's, it's, it, we're humble, Brother Ricardo, and we do not take this lightly. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I personally got requests to do interviews with some of the local media here. Um, I've had requests of national publications, and I turned them down. But when you called, Brother, okay. I answered. Thank you. I had no hesitation, because <laughs> I wanted to come be with my brother, because you, 
share with me from your spirit. And we often listen to the spirit of a person that uh, what you are producing here. Our prayer is that God will bless it, bless you, bless your team, because it takes a team, that you will be successful in this podcast to reach our young people. Uh, because there are not a lot of people that have the subjects that you have that are giving opportunity for people to come on this platform Thank you, bro. and share that knowledge with our people. Our prayer is that Allah bless you and any kind of way we can support you with spreading this podcast. We'll spread it because this is the good news that Jesus talked about. So you're on your post and the wonderful brothers and sisters you have here with you. Stay together. Stay united. Things are going to be difficult. But trials are meant to purify us. So we're thankful and we're honored on behalf of myself, um, the student laborers of Winston-Salem and the believers of the Winston-Salem Mosque. We are honored that you gave us this invitation to share a few words from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said we're a humble brother. So that's the greatest shout out that I wanted to give is to you. So thank you, bro. Uh, yes. That's good. Oh, I'm writing in. Uh, <laughs> y'all could have been anywhere in the world, but y'all here with us on oh, another edition of Dirty Talk. Peace, love, and happiness. Yeah. yeah.